Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to update the multi module firmware on the RadioMaster TX16S. One of the interesting things about running an OpenTX radio and a multi module is that there's constant development in the software for both the module and the radio itself. This video is focused on the multi-module, and I want to start out by saying you don't necessarily need to update your multi-module firmware. The best way to figure out whether or not you should is by looking at the change log. So go in the change log and take a look at what's going on. In this multi-module update, they've added an FCC sub-protocol to Fursky R9. They've fixed some issues in the V2X2 protocol. In the Kyosho protocol, they've added new capabilities in a new surface protocol called FHSS introduced in 2017 and you can just read down this list and see if there's information or changes or fixes in here that are beneficial to you if there aren't then you don't need to update the firmware it's not a required thing to do that's one of the things that gets me about firmware and that's one of the reasons i don't like like what windows does these days where they force updates down your throat when i first got the laptop i'm using it worked perfectly a couple of firmware updates later and it's i've got all kinds of little issues the moral of the story is you don't have to upgrade the firmware. So don't take this video as an indicator that you have to have the latest and greatest software. That said, if you do choose to upgrade the firmware because you've looked at the change log and decided there's something in here you have to have, then by all means, keep watching. The easiest way to get the firmware for your radio is to go to this link, which I will put in the description, and you can choose in this dropdown which radio you have. I'm focused on the RadioMaster TX16S, so that's the one I'll be using. And then on the right hand side, you can select filters to help you narrow down the right firmware for your multi module. For the RadioMaster TX16S, it does use the STM32 module. My radio type is OpenTX. The channel order that I prefer is AETR. If you've got some other channel order like TAER or RETA, choose that one. Uh, I use AETR. For telemetry, click the help button and what it tells you is that you want inverted for external modules and not inverted for internal modules. So if you're updating the internal module on the TX16S, you want to choose not inverted. For firmware version, 1.3.1.49 is the latest as of the posting of this video. And I also recommend, because the, this is a pretty serious element of your radio controlled experience, is the radio itself. I recommend, unless you're involved in a development process, just avoid the pre-releases and the debug, debug builds. Just stay away from them. And you can see once you've applied these filters, this website narrows down the choices for you. And you can see I've got multi-STM, OpenTX, AETR, no inversion, 1.3.1.49, and there's some multi-Lua scripts they want me to download too. One of the other comments I get in firmware update videos all the time is, hey, my stuff didn't work. Most of the time that's because the user didn't update something. So as you can see in this download list, not only is there a binary for the firmware update, there's also a zip file containing some Lua script updates. So I recommend pulling them both down. Okay, we'll click on this binary file, which is the firmware itself, and we'll also pull down the Lua script update zip archive. I've downloaded my firmware update binary and the Lua script archive and I put them both on my desktop. All right, I've got my USB wire connected to the top of the radio. Now I'll plug the other end into my computer. When we do that, we should get a pop-up showing the SD card contents and a firmware folder. You just close the firmware folder. That's not where we're working today. Close that. You'll notice in your SD card contents, there's a folder called firmware. Click on that and drag the binary file over to that folder and let it go. And then let's unpack this archive and you'll see inside there's a script folder and there's a script folder in the SD card as well. So in the tools folder, all you have to do is drag these files over and let them rip. You probably get a complaint that they're existing files. Just go ahead and hit replace. And that's it. That's all we need to do on the computer. Now we'll move over to the radio and disconnect our USB cable. Before I update my multi-module firmware, I'll show you the version I'm currently running. 
We'll get there by pressing the model button and then scrolling the jog wheel to the left. And you can see that I've got module version 1.3.1.36 AETR on my radio at the moment. Okay, so now hit the return key and get back to your main screen. Hit your system button and then hit page right one time to get to your SD card and notice the firmware folder. When I click on that, you can see this firmware that we just copied onto that SD card from the computer is there. This is the 1.3.1.49 binary. I'm going to long press this and I have an option. I can flash an internal or an external. I'm going to flash the internal. Just let it do its thing. Don't touch it. <laughs> Leave it alone. By the way, good idea to make sure your battery is fully charged. You know, that kind of goes without saying, I think, in this day and age, but I'm going to throw that out there just to make sure. Okay, flash successful, press enter, and now let's go back to the main screen, press the model button, and then scroll to the left and we'll see if we've got the update, and we do. Module status version 1.3.1.49 AETR. One other thing we'll check since we upgraded the radio, we'll press the system button, go to the tools menu, and one of the scripts in there was a multi-channel namer. I'm going to click on that to make sure it executes, and it does. So that's the new script that I just updated. There's also a Gropner HOTT Lua script that was updated. I'm just going to press that, and it says no hot telemetry. So the script is running, but there's no telemetry because I don't have one of those devices. So that looks like it's running okay. Well, there you go. That's how you update the multi-module firmware on the RadioMaster TX16S. Remember what I said at the beginning though, just because there's an updated firmware doesn't mean you have to flash it. My recommendation is to go look at the change log and see if there's anything in that change log that resonates for you or that they fixed for you or that gives you some functionality that you need to have. If you don't need to have it and your transmitter's working the way you expect it to, then leave it alone. There's no harm in leaving it alone and waiting until there's a compelling update that makes sense for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to ask if you're a visitor to RC Video Reviews and you haven't hit that subscribe button, a full 64% of our viewers don't subscribe. So if you're one of those people that keeps coming back, please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining the channel. It really does make a difference. It helps with videos getting placement and it helps the channel grow. So I would appreciate your subscription. If you're already a subscriber to the channel, I appreciate your continued engagement with the videos, comments, share, thumbs up, all of that stuff helps. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links in the description along with my t-shirt store and I will have a link for the multi-module download site in the description as well. That's all I've got for today guys. Take it easy.